What's up guys, welcome back. Today it's time to have a closer look at the biggest men's fashion trends for upcoming spring summer 23. I put together 15 biggest trends from spring summer fashion week that took place back in summer in early June. These trends are already highly relevant and will be even more so in the upcoming spring summer. All right, before jumping in, let's look back and recap what has changed, what not, etc. If I could describe the last spring summer season in few words, that would be oversized tailoring, Bermuda shorts, leather, many skirts, and of course, sleeveless wear. Well, oversized silhouette is still here. Spring summer 23 runways were packed with oversized suits and baggy pants, leather trend, has evolved to a biker trend. Bermuda shorts gotten much shorter and tank tops have become a new sleeveless wear. Skirts are still actual, but they are not as big as they were on spring summer 22 runways. In terms of new stuff, there are a lot. For upcoming spring summer, designers want us to go full denim and ride through the wild west. Designers also brought floral fever to the 23 runways and played a lot with soft masculine vibes. Alright, without further ado, here are the biggest fashion trends for spring summer 2023. If you guys suddenly decided to join a motorcycle club, you are not alone. Designers felt this urge too, so they sent out a wide array of motorsport inspired clothing down the runway. The material of choice is leather which probably should not come as a surprise because leather has been gaining a massive attention since spring summer 22. Nothing evokes more feelings of freedom and coolness than a leather biker jacket. The spirit was fully captured at Dolce & Gabbana, where leather biker jackets were paired with racing gloves and biker boots. At Prada, biker trend is portrayed with leather coordinates, which combine double zip mini shorts and biker sleeveless top. Mucia Prada and Ralph Simons played with the same look in different hues and accessories. Prada biker outfits look definitely fancier when accessorized with an oversized tote bag. At this queer, Dean and Dan even collaborated with motorcycle maker Honda for their spring summer collection. Runway was packed with motorsport wear such as racing jackets, racing pants, protective gear, etc. Dean and Dan experimented a lot with biker clothing. Denim jackets were spiced up with biker sleeves, not to mention a hybrid piece made out of racing jacket and a utility blazer. Biker trend flourished also at Balenciaga, where massively oversized biker uniforms were the order of the day. Well, probably everyone watching this is aware of the huge scandal around Balenciaga and its gifting campaigns with kids. It's mind-blowing and really hard to understand how the brand on top of its game ended up in a huge crisis like this. Alright, back to the biker trend. At Moschino, Jeremy Scott showed some toughness and sense of rebellion. He sent out biker uniforms both in leather and nylon. They featured graphic elements inspired by works of Tony Viramontes. At Dries Van Noten, biker trend flourished further. Super interesting to see how Dries Van Noten spiced up formal outfits by using racing pants, not to mention his outfits that he came up with by combining a racing sleeveless top with pyjamas and sandals. Last but not least, biker jackets were everywhere at Celine. Adi Sliman presented a wide variety of oversized biker jackets. He added a special twist. He spiced up biker jackets with details such as fringe and accessorized them with crystals and rhinestones. Sheer looks and sisal clothing had a major moment on the spring summer 23 runways. This trend includes clothes made with lace, mesh or sheer fabric that allows the wearer's body to be seen through the fabric. At Dolce & Gabbana, from sheer and net tops to mesh knits, the runway was populated with sisal clothing. Domenico and Stefano called this collection re-edition. 
Designers look to its archives to find some of their most iconic looks since the 90s. They took those pieces and gave them a fresh and new context. Similar to Dolce & Gabbana, sheer looks took over the runway at Tetro. See-through caftans, mesh tops, list goes on. All these transparencies and breezy volumes also nodded to the brand's nomadic roots. This collection was the last one for creative director Kin Etro. He will be passing the Etro crown to Marco Di Vincenzo. The most original looks were spotted at Rick Owen's show. His models wore see-through hooded robes. Rick came up with this in Egypt, where he was fed up with flies and mosquitoes, so he devised the fly-proof tool caftons. Rick also presented a wide array of books using translucent leather. We can call it also transparent leather. Rick uses specially treated fabric to make a reference to jellyfish as a symbol of timelessness. At Balenciaga, transparent tops were spiced up with glitter. Demna also showcased transparent tartnecks with mesh texture. These looks were accessorized with a bag of lace chips, one of the recent inventions from Demna. At Dior, Kim Jones dressed his models in see-through tops that featured artworks from Duncan Grant. Duncan Grant was a member of notorious Blumsbury Group. At St. Laurent, Anthony Vaccarello sent out gorgeous looks with see-through tops. His silhouettes were relaxed and fluid. He managed to blur boundaries flawlessly in terms of male and female clothing. This collection was a statement about modern, elevated taste. Last but not least, let's head to Valentino. Peter Paolo Piccioli sent out super impeccable suits and tuxedos down the runway. Models wore them over transparent tops that finished up outfits nicely. It took away stiffness out of formal clothing and gave it super elegant vibes. Streetwear stays in the game for upcoming spring-summer, and denim plays a big role in this, specifically double denim outfits. At Dolce & Gabbana, double denim outfits look distressed and heavily patched. Denim pants were cut into parts and then patched onto the jackets and the matching pants. Double denim outfits that stood out included polo shirt and Bermuda shorts combo. At Fendi, the collection was dedicated to spare time and as expected, denim played an important part in it. Sylvia Fendi sent out double denim outfits in utilitarian style. As she commented after the show, denim is a fabric that for her best represents the sense of freedom. At Givenchy, models sported double denim outfits with oversized denim vests. Matthew Williams spiced up denim pants with details such as zips on the sides and ripped knees. At that manner, double denim outfits looked massively oversized. They were inspired by functional and utility wear. Ed Maynor is known for his fluid drapery and dramatic volumes, so not surprised to see super oversized silhouettes. Double denim trend was also pretty strong at Kenzo. Nigo's models had this look of cool kids dressed to impress. Nigo spiced up denim jackets with leopard prints. As we all know, Nigo and denim get along pretty well. Alright, double denim trend at Moschino was super colorful and special. These looks were inspired by Buffalo Boys movement and artworks of the fashion illustrator Tony Viramontes. Jeremy Scott elevated double denim outfits with details such as latex dress layered over pants and gloves. At Prada, double denim outfits looked simple and yet brilliant. Ralph Simons and Mucia Prada presented four denim looks. Two of them included denim shorts. Defining elements of those looks were tucked in denim jackets, minimalistic styling and of course stripped colors. Last but not least at Y Project, Glenn Martins pushed his signature aesthetic throughout the presentation, which mostly featured denim. His double denim outfits looked fabulous. Typical to Y Project, classic silhouettes were distorted to create unexpected shapes and silhouettes. Western-inspired fashion has been on a rise and seems like it is here to stay. I think it was Ralph Lauren back in 90s who first showcased Western wear on the runways. Anyways guys, spring-summer 23 runways were populated with Western and 
cowboy-inspired pieces. Designers like Sharaf Tajer, who is founder and creative director of Casablanca, dedicated his entire collection to Wild West. Runways was packed with Western-inspired pieces, such as cowboy boots, fringe jackets, Western shirts, rodeo jeans, and cowboy hats. Sharaf Tajer even built a ranch with four real horses and assigned two professional cowboys to keep them cow. Similar to Casablanca, Western seam was big at selling. Western-inspired clothing was everywhere on the runway. Eddie Sliman brought out his vision of his useful American coolness and he mixed it with Western style. So collection channeled also spirit of punk and rock and roll. Alright, looks like Western-inspired clothing took over the runway also Dries Van Noten. Models wore cowboy boots and Western-inspired shirts. Dries Van Noten presented a wide range of original and super interesting outfits. He combined racing pants with Western shirts and mules. Outfits like this, you know, you don't see that often. Western influence was also strong at MSGM. Massimo Giorgetti sent out a wide array of looks with Western boxy shirts. He used Western accessories a lot in his collection, such as cowboy hats and Western-inspired double belts. Last but not least, Western-style boots were also spotted at Bottega. The ones that stood out were Python leather cowboy boots. Popularity of cargo pants comes from the functional clothing trend that took over fashion in the past few years. Pants with pouch pockets and roomy silhouettes were everywhere on spring-summer 2023 runways. This trend was massive at Dolce & Gabbana. The runway was full of cargo pants in many different fabric and style. This collection was dedicated to the heritage of the brand and included the most iconic looks from the 90s. As Stefano explained, this collection demonstrated the idea of building modernity from the past, a past that also feels contemporary and unique. Similar to Dolce & Gabbana, cargo pants thrived at Givenchy. Matthew Williams presented a wide range of looks featuring this trend. Interesting ones included urban military outfit that featured cargo pants and jackets with camo prints. By the way, this collection received a lot of attention and critics due to the fact that it was heavily branded. Givenchy logo was featured almost in every look. Alright, cargo pants get wider and baggier at Dries Van Noten. Here cargo pants feature multiple pouchy-like front pockets and they are styled with a racing sleeveless jacket and pair of sandals. At Rick Owens, extra long, cargo pants dominated the runway. Pants were so long that they twisted and dragged under footwear. Rick showcased a wide range of cargo pants in denim, leather, you name it. The runway was full of super original and exotic looks. The look with Python skin cargo pants and Piraruku fish leather jacket stole the show. Last but not least, let's check out cargo pants at Isabel Marat. Actually here I included looks from Women's Wear 2023 show. Anyways, cargo pants in this collection looked super fun and full of summer vibes. Purple is overthrowing pink and red for upcoming spring-summer. Maybe popularity of purple can be attributed to the American color chart Pantone that assigned purple as the flagship color of the next 12 months. Or maybe suddenly everyone digs purple just because it can provide an extra touch of boldness. Anyways, looking at the spring-summer 2023 runways, Purple as well as shades of purple such as lilac and violet were the choice of color for many designers. It was super interesting to see color purple at Giorgio Armani show. Looks like Mr. Armani experimented a lot with colors and patterns. He presented a wide array of purple soft shoulder suits worn casually over long flowing shirts. Looks like purple also infiltrated Louis Vuitton runway show. With this collection, Louis Vuitton marked the final celebration of Virgil Abloh and his legacy. Kendrick Lamar was present at the show. He wore a crown of thrones and did a lyrical incantation. It was totally unexpected to see purple at Rick Owen's show. As Rick explained, he wanted some hope and light because his past collections 
have been always dark and super fatalistic. This is in line with the fact that collection inspiration God Horus represents the triumph of good over evil. Harpool was also present at J.W. Anderson. Designer presented an original look with a purple hoodie. Lastly, let's head to Moschino. Jeremy Scott presented stunning looks in purple tones. His models look like sketches from Tony Viramontes' illustrative works. Winnec tops are making big comeback for spring summer. This renewed interest probably is due to a recent fame of cutouts. Anyways, Winnec is back and it's deeper than ever. This can be seen clearly at Dries Van Noten. Designer presented Winnec sweaters that reached nearly down the navel area. It had a cool preppy charm mixed with cosmopolitan vibes. At Dolce & Gabbana, Winnecs go from preppy to more sensual and seductive. Color palette was strictly dark and mostly black. That actually complemented the vibe and gave it more elegant touch. Similar to Dolce & Gabbana, Winex at Etro were on fire. Probably we saw the most chest flashing Winex of all the brands. In some cases, they dangled off the shoulder. It was such a beautiful and sensual collection. Kin Etro played a lot with gentle masculinity that was filtered through his sentimental eye. At JW Anderson, models wore Winex sweaters with industrial leather gloves stuck to it, probably to show how generic or banal clothing can become something more. At this period, Winex sweater West were the order of the day. Caton Brothers presented super colorful and free-spirited collection. That was an invitation to chill and relax. This collection was inspired by surf culture and 70s Jamaica. Similar to this quirt, at Dior, Kim Jones dressed his models in V-neck sweaters. They featured artworks by Duncan Grant. At Loewe, J.W. Anderson dressed his models in V-neck sweaters, styled with leggings and sandals. In case you're curious, this collection was inspired by nature and technology, a fusion of the organic and fabricated. Because of this, if you look closer, needs were heavily textured, reminiscent of the foam that grows on trees. Winex also were spotted at Rick Owens. In fact, it was a bodysuit which models wore unzipped, floating from the waist. Fashion trends are cyclical in nature. They get introduced, rise to the mainstream popularity, after a while they disappear and then they get reintroduced again. Just like crop tops, they were originally huge in 90s and now they are back in style again. This trend is super hot right now, so people get comfortable with exposed midriffs. However, not all crop tops are equally revealing, so it's up to you to choose how short you wanna go. All right, let's have a look at Celine. Eddie Slimon dressed his models in mesh crop tops. They were styled with blazers and leather jackets. Typical to Eddie Slimon, outfits look total rock and roll. J.W. Anderson showcased crop tops with technical material. They were drosting adjustable and cropped asymmetrically. Anderson styled this trend with denim pants and pickup boxers. At Louis Vuitton, models wore cropped vests and short-sleeved sweaters. They were styled with high-waist skirts, which actually created super interesting hourglass silhouette. At MSGM, this trend is showcased with cropped boxy shirts and polo shirts, which can be styled with boxers and sandals and still look good. Other outfits for this trend were built with tailored suits, skateboard sneakers, and accessorized with wide brim cowboy hats. All right, crop tops get shorter at Moschino. The runway was packed with extremely short crop tops that Jeremy Scott styled flawlessly with biker boots and Bermuda shorts. At Balenciaga, Demna showcased his trend with cropped outwear. His models walked the muddy runway with cropped puffers and fleece jackets. Demna styled those pieces with baggy denim, pickup boxers, and Dutch clocks which no doubt were essentials on the show to splash through the mud and water. Similar to Balenciaga, cropped outwear was a thing at Rick Owen's show. Runway was packed with cropped bomber jackets. Most of them were made with translucent leather. Other ones that stood out featured elongated shoulders, just like falcon wings. 
This was in line with the collection inspiration of God Horus, who in fact is Falcon faced God. Similar to crop tops, flared pants were big in 90s. However, their original fame comes from 70s. Anyways, flared pants are back in full swing on spring summer 23 runways. This trend was massive at this square. Well, this should not come as a surprise because it was inspired 70s Jamaica and surf culture. So, totally makes sense. The runway was packed with flare pants in many different fabric and style. On this, Caton Brothers worked with the Bob Marley Foundation to use Bob Marley portraits on the clothing. Designers sent out flare pants, mostly in 70s style, but with more subtle flair at the end. Dean and Dan showcased many interesting and fun looks, such as, for instance, flared pants in denim with cannabis leaf prints. Similar to this skirt, this trend was big at Casablanca. Here, flared pants are cropped and future as slit at the end with three-button closure. Sharaf Tajer styled them with western shirts and ponchos. This look took over the runway also at Rick Owens. Rick presented a wide range of flare pants with lengths so long that they twisted and dragged under footwear. If you guys are curious about this collection, you can check out my detailed review for the show. I will link it in the description below. Tank tops attracted a lot of attention on the spring summer runways. In fact, tank tops always have been an essential item, but mostly used for layering as secondary players. For the upcoming spring summer, they become the main players in the outfit. Especially, feminine tank tops with thinner straps have been on the rise. This can be seen clearly at this one of the show, where designers sent out a broad range of looks with feminine tank tops. Dries Van Norton examined gender fluidity in this collection. Even though it was apparently based on a traditional idea of menswear, still we saw interesting pieces such as minimal tanks with super thin straps just like a camisole. Dries Van Norton explained these looks as masculine feminine. Similar to Dries Van Norton, tank tops at Y project looked feminine. They featured transparent nylon straps that looked like they were floating at Versace. Colorful tank tops with cutout backs took over the runway. As Donatella put it, this collection is all about young generation and the freedom they demonstrate, as they are not afraid to mix pieces so different from each other. At Balenciaga, Demna came up with mini tank tops that looked like a hybrid of a corset and a camisole. They were styled with super wide belts that finished up the looks nicely and created an interesting silhouette. At Bottega, Matthew Blazy put a twist on the strand. He presented double layer tank tops, such an original way to showcase the strand. Alright, this strand becomes more masculine at Dolce & Gabbana. Just like the overall collection, tank tops here are heavily distressed and future ripped elements. Designers also presented few looks with sport tank tops. This was a tribute to David Beckham, a long time muse to the designer's vision of menswear. Tank tops infiltrated runway also at Rick Owens. In fact, in show opener look, Tyron Dillon wore a super mini tank that was deconstructed and destroyed. It was reduced to just bindings that finished the edges. The other half of the tank was wrapped around his hips. Florals are a staple for spring summer collection, so this season is no exception. Runways were packed with floral prints. They can be as soft and feminine in character. They will make you look more outgoing and friendly though, which is awesome if you're out and want to socialize and make some friends. Alright, floral theme was indeed dominant at Etro. Kinetro sent out a myriad of beautiful looks with floral prints, which kind of made sense because the collection was inspired by poetry. Relaxed tailoring, elongated shirts, kimonos and kaftans were all adorned with floral patterns in various shapes and forms that reinforced the breezy and bohemian feeling of this collection. Similar to Etro, floral theme was dominant at Dolce & Gabbana show. Domenico and Stefano presented mind-blowing floral embroideries covered with shiny crystals. Models wore the strand with blazers 
layered over white shirts and paired with heavily distressed baggy denim. Din and Dan of this period presented a colorful and free-spirited collection. As noted above, it was inspired by surf culture and 70s Jamaica. Floral prints took many forms and shapes on the runway, such as floral shirts wrapped around hippie skirts and floral shorts. At Kenzo, this trend was captured in terms of brooch and embroidery. Nigo used poppy flowers as the collection trademark motif. The poppy flower, emblematic of a meeting between East and West, is a strong symbol of a Japanese culture. It was used a lot throughout this collection, sometimes pinned on a suit jackets and sometimes pinned on models' heads. Floral seams thrived also at MSGM. Let's start that on the set there was a beautiful pond surrounded by greenery. This was in line with the collection inspiration of Imaginary Island from Michel Welbeck's dystopian novel. Giorgetti sent out a lot of floral inspired pieces that channeled super positive and joyful vibes. Lastly, let's head out to Loewe. Floral prints were absent from the collection, however, botanical theme was super dominant. So I decided to include it in floral trends. Here Anderson collaborated with a Spanish fashion designer who has been experimented with growing plants on fabrics and shoes, and that can be seen clearly on the runway. Suits worn without shirts have been on the rise since the pandemic. The rise of working from home and deformalized dress codes have put the traditional shirt tie and blazer combo out of the job. The main idea of shirtless suits is to make a wearer's life easier. It's comfortable and highly versatile, and you don't have to think a lot about it. The shirtless suit trend was one of the biggest on spring-summer runways. Almost every menswear designer experimented with it and put their twist on it. At Balenciaga, shirtless suits looked super casual. They were distressed and massively oversized. No doubt those suits met the vibe of the whole set design of being somewhere in the dark and post-apocalyptic world. At Dior, Kim Jones suits were highly influenced by gardening and hiking. They combined elegance and lightness and celebrated great outdoors and nature. So guys, if you sometimes feel like a fancy gardener, head to Dior to get the look. Similar to Dior, shirtless suits looked fabulous at Dries Van Otten. Most of the looks featured double-breasted and oversized suiting. It was Dries Van Norton at his simple, elegant best. By the way, the suit in Burgundy stole the show. This trend dominated the runway also at Giorgio Armani, where a broad range of soft-shouldered suits were worn without shirts. Color palette used here was super interesting. It was a variable color that blended gray and beige. Suits were accessorized by scarves wrapped around models' necks super casually. At Givenchy, Matthew Williams sent out super handsome tailoring down the runway. His shirtless suits featured details such as elongated blazers and pants with blown out knees. They were accessorized with chain necklaces, which in fact is super popular piece of jewelry. At Moschino, shirtless suits were everywhere. Jeremy Scott transferred Tony Viramonte's amazing works directly on the clothes. He applied abstract faces and motifs to tailor it as seen on a striking series of suits ranging from the bicolored show opener to an oversized elongated blazer. This all matched the fearless message of self-expression Jeremy Scott has always pushed during his tenure at Moschino. Alright, shirtless suits featured strong shoulder line at St. Laurent. Silhouettes were relaxed and fluid, emitting a fusion of masculine and feminine vibes. Here in this collection, Anthony Vaccarello reimagined and reinterpreted famous Les Smoking, the tuxedo that St. Lawrence's founder fashioned for women in the 60s. This season, Anthony Vaccarello returns his jacket to the menswear wardrobe, but with the feminine fluidity that he achieved with fabrics like chiffon, satin, and velvet. Last but not least, let's check out shirtless suits at Versace. Here the menswear collection was presented together with Versace home collection. Models carried urns and vases. Message was clear, Versace is not just a brand, it's a whole lifestyle. This season designers decided 
to shake things up with stripes once again. They experimented with everything from monochrome to multicolor. Stripes are especially popular among young people because they channel rebellious and useful vibes. Anyways, stripes were the main attraction for many designers. At this queer, stripes took many different shapes and forms. Multicolored stripes were everywhere, such as red, green and yellow, inspired by Jamaica and Rastafari. Definitely we should mention here how Din and Dance layering technique reaches new heights each passing season. Stripes also played a big part in Dries One of Trans collection. Horizontal as well as vertical stripes were used intensively throughout this collection. Dries One of Trans presented a lot of looks with pinstripe pyjama pants and shorts. His outfits look effortless yet elegant. There was this vibe of just got out of bed and out to get a morning coffee. At JW Anderson, striped tops were worn as accessories, wrapped around model's shoulders. Anderson spiced up the looks with BMX handbars, this to remind us of the short lifespan of modernity and its inevitable descent into irrelevance. At Prada, Ralph Simmons and Mucia Prada presented striped tartnecks and crew neck pullovers. They channeled super positive and useful wives, their skin tight fit accentuated models natural body shapes. Here in this collection most garments look rather simple, looks like Prada gave traditional wardrobe staples its original spin. According to designers, this collection was all about reinventing the known garments through context. Finally, let's have a look at Versace, where pinstripe pattern dominated the runway. Pinstripe tailoring was everywhere, striped suits, coats, pants, etc. Shorts are no doubt spring-summer season staples. Each season, menswear designers experiment and reinvent this garment. Last spring-summer, Bermuda shorts ruled the runways. Well, this spring-summer, short shorts took over and dethroned the Bermuda shorts. This trend was one of the collection highlights at Balenciaga. Demna designed a broad range of looks using short shorts. He paired them with zip-up hoodies in matching color. These outfits were accessorized with the notorious teddy bear bags, one of the reasons for the recent Balenciaga scandal. At Dior, the runway was populated with short shorts. Here, shorts are worn over leggings. Anyways, these looks were inspired by hiking and gardening, which makes sense because the whole set was a garden that connected two houses, Christian Dior's Granul Villa and Charleston Farmhouse. At Fendi, creative director Sylvia Fendi showcased this trend in a wide array of looks inspired by freedom and simplicity. Fendi's spring-summer collection was fresh, authentic and, most importantly, wearable. Majority of the looks were rooted in a mid-90s workwear slash skatewear aesthetic and featured abstract patterns that, according to Sylvia Fendi, was inspired by cowhide and meteorological maps. At Ferragamo, short shorts get even shorter. Models wore all black leather outfits. By the way, it was Maximilian Davis' debut show for Ferragamo. He was appointed as a creative director back in March 2022. Alright, at Prada, double zip leather shorts were go-tos for many looks. They were paired with coats, tunic shirts, knitwear, etc. As designers explained, those garments themselves are simple but when put together, the end result becomes something exciting and unusual. Neckties were trendy accessory in fall winter 2020. The year after, they disappeared from runways. It took them a few years so to come back again in full swing. This season, designers embrace this trend and show us many different ways to spice up our outfits. At Celine, Adi Sliman experimented with super thin ties. He sent out crispy tailored looks and rakish suits featuring neckties as skinny as shoelaces. These looks were highly reminiscent of his past Dior days. At DNG, neckties go wider. Models walk the runway with oversized suits in 90s style and with neckties tucked into pants. These looks more or less were expected because this collection was highly inspired of the brand's 90s archives. Neckties were big also at Dries Van Norten. 
Designers showcased many interesting looks which were inspired and influenced by male subcultures in fashion, particularly the Zazius and Buffalo Boys movement. All right, Ed Maynard presented super interesting looks with short and square end ties. This trend gets even bigger at Moschino. Jeremy Scott celebrated his first menswear show in the eight years time, and for sure he made it special. At MSGM, Massimo Giorgetti showcased super wide double neckties. They featured striped pattern and ranged from green to pink and purple. Here, neckties added super positive aura to the Giorgetti's outfits. Last but not least, ties were spotted also at Tom Ford. Here, neckties are showcased with super elegant party wear suits. Despite all the glossy and shiny clothing, this collection had a bit melancholic vibe to it. This probably cause Tom Ford lost his husband nearly a year ago. All right, that wraps up today's video pretty much. Hope you enjoyed the trends and got something out of it. Let me know in the comments which trends you are most excited about. All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.